So normally we're talking about getting all that heat out, but right now we're talking about keeping it in. Hey guys, Pat from Aeroflow, and I'm going to go over our turbo beanies, turbo blankets, turbo covers, whatever you want to call them. We've got a whole range. Um, now, most people that are familiar with it will know that a turbocharger in an engine produces an extreme amount of heat. Uh, the downside of that is everything else around the turbocharger cops it pretty hard. So if you've got uh, a fuel rail that's nearby, or you've got uh, intercooler pipes that's nearby, oil lines, um, paint, anything that's susceptible to extreme heat, you really want to protect that. Um, so one of the best ways to do that is to throw one of these turbo blankets on the rear housing and it's going to keep that heat in. Not only is it going to keep the heat in and away from those external components, it's also going to keep the heat inside of the housing, inside the turbine, which in turn makes the turbocharger more efficient. The hot air carries a lot of energy and that's what drives the turbine wheel. So the more heat you can keep in there, the more efficient and the more effective the turbocharger is going to be. The downside is all of that heat produced can leak into other components, as we've previously mentioned. So by putting one of these, uh, the appropriately sized blanket on the rear housing, it's going to keep all that heat in. It's going to try to protect the compressor cover and the compressor wheel on the front. To, you, know, you don't want to preheat the air before you're about to heat it again. So that's going to keep all of that in there and keep everything happy. So when it comes to choosing the appropriate bag for your application, we've got three different variants when it comes to heat resistance. Now, why would there be different versions? So in some cases you've got uh, application where you've got a very compact and tight engine bay, so the turbocharger's in there and there's a lot of, a, a lot of heat hanging around in the engine bay. Uh, others might be uh, quite an open or an open air uh, engine bay that you basically want to actually just protect the rear housing, um, you know, things touching it, keeping the temperature inside uh, the turbine, uh, or you know, you've got a lot of air flowing around so you don't need that external area to be quite as cool. And then you've got uh, one that's in the middle um, and personal preference as to the look that you like as well. So as you can see here we have the black standard finish, we have the carbon finish, and then the titanium finish. So we start on the bottom here with the black standard finish, which all of these have the same glass fibre material on the inside, which is resistant to 1370 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about 2500 degrees Fahrenheit for those of us in the US. Uh, the external on the black standard is 600 degrees C, the carbon is 1000 degrees C, and then the titanium is 1370 C, or 2500 Fahrenheit. So both internal and external on the titanium has the highest heat rating. So depending on your application, or you know if you really need to manage engine bay temperatures, or you know, you've got components that are close to it, definitely jump straight to the titanium. It's a little bit more expensive, but in the long run, it's gonna save you money and give you a better result for your setup. Now, we have universal bags that are based off size, so familiar turbocharger frame sizes, and they range all the way from a T28 or a T2 through to T3, T4, and then T6. We have two versions on the T6. There is um, a slightly smaller T6, which you'll be familiar with, say, an S400 uh, sort of turbocharger uh, or a medium, medium frame turbo that has a large T6 rear housing. Uh, and then we also have uh, a new addition to the range, which is your large frame G57, GTX 55, you know, S500 large T6 rear housing. So we've got those available in carbon and titanium now. We also have direct fit uh, applications. So whether we're talking uh, a small Nissan internally gated turbocharger, uh, if we're talking uh, Mitsubishi Evo, which is this guy over here, uh, we have WRX, we also have R35 GTR. So they'll all bolt onto the factory or factory replacement um, turbochargers, uh, strap around. When you fit it over the, uh, over the turbo, 
you effectively want it to be nice and tight and to be snug on the turbine housing. So if you pick something that's too large, it's not going to keep the heat in. If you pick something that's too small, obviously it's not going to cover the area and it's going to be very difficult to fit. So when you choose the appropriate size, you then use these supplied springs that you latch on to these lugs that are on either side of the, either side of the bag uh, and that holds them down tight and keeps them fitted. Now, it's, there's a couple of things that you need to remember when you're putting these bags on. The material that's inside on the outside is flame resistant. What isn't flame resistant is any contamination that you might get onto these bags. So if you're degreasing or cleaning your engine bay using something that may be flammable or if you have an oil leak or something like that and that soaks into the bag, that's what's going to catch on fire rather than the bag itself. If you're fitting it uh, and then you, know, you notice that the bag is rubbing against something or you know, say it's not quite touching an inner guard or a chassis rail or some other, some other fixed position, but your engine mounts have a bit of movement in them, say using factory engine mounts, and then when that moves, it rubs against that chassis rail, the bag's gonna fail. It's not abrasion resistant, it's heat resistant. So you have to take that into consideration when you're fitting it. So we can't be held responsible for a bag that's been doused in degreaser or oil uh, rubbing up against a chassis rail and then it catches fire the next time you go to a track day. That's something that you've got to use a bit of common sense about. You've just got to keep that in mind when you do fit them up. Make sure that you know, everything's nice and clear, they're fitted well, and when you're cleaning your engine bay or if you have some sort of leak or anything like that, make sure you remove the bag, clean it um, you know, using any sort of cleaning, like an all-purpose cleaner. Let it dry before you refit it and then run the, run the thing up and you've got an 800 degree turbo trying to set everything on fire. We don't want that. Another thing that is definitely a pet gripe of mine, I see our, our turbo blankets everywhere and a lot of the time the plate on the top is orange uh, or it's brown or something's gone on. It's not the plate that's failing. There's a little sticker that's on these plates. So for shipment and whatnot, we don't want them getting scratched. So there's a little clear sticker. You want to peel that off. Please peel that off before you start using this blanket. That's what goes orange. So just remember, a lot of people don't know that it's on there and that's fair enough. You probably may not, if you're not looking at it closely, you may not, you may not see, but there is a little plastic sticker on there. You can just flip the edge up, peel it off and you won't have that issue. So it'll stay nice and clean and um, nice and black and white and you'll be able to see that logo nicely and it won't look like this gross thing that's melting off your car. All right guys, now you know why it's important to keep the heat in sometimes and keep it away from other components. You can check out these turbo blankets at your local distributor, a quality retail outlet or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com. <laughs>